Hi, I'm Matt Barlow with Barlow's Tackle, and today we're going to help you get started pouring your own worms. Pouring your own worms is a great and easy way to get exactly the bait you want. Before we talk about what you need to get started, let's go through a few important safety points. When you are pouring worms, it's very important you do it in a well-ventilated area. Hot liquid plastic does give off fumes that are hazardous to your health. You should also always wear safety glasses, a respirator, and appropriate clothing for pouring. The tools and materials you use for pouring worms should not be used for anything else, especially food. Finally, you should keep any moisture away from your worm making materials. Hot liquid plastic and water are a potentially explosive combination. Now that we've covered safety, let's talk about what you need to get pouring. To start pouring your own plastic worms, there are a few things you have to have. The first is a mold. At Barlow's, we offer open pour molds, which simply lay on a flat surface and you pour the liquid plastic into. We also offer fully round injection molds. For more information on worm molds, check out our other video that goes into specific details on open pour and injection molds. Once you have your mold, you need your plastic. Now what you'll find with all the liquid plastic we sell and for most other companies is that there are a few different grades. The main difference between these being the type of baits they pour. We offer everything from super soft liquid plastic, which makes a very pliable soft bait, to extra hard saltwater liquid plastic, which makes a much firmer, more durable bait. Generally, all liquid plastics can be blended and mixed to get different types of effects on your bait. If you are using an injection style mold, there are a couple of other things you need. The first is a liquid plastic injector. These come in a number of different sizes and forms, depending on what it is you want to pour. You also need a good set of clamps. We recommend investing in a good pair of clamps. The cheaper clamps you might find at discount stores typically won't hold your injection mold closed tightly enough to prevent liquid plastic from leaking out of it. Along with your liquid plastic and your mold, you will also want liquid color to give the color to the bait you pour. We have a couple of different options for you in terms of how you color your plastic. The first is called transparent coloring. And this does exactly what it sounds like. If you pour baits using transparent colors, you will be able to see through them somewhat. So if you're using lots of glitter in your baits, you probably want to go with a transparent color. The downside to transparent colors is that they're made with dye, and because of that, they can bleed onto each other. So if, for example, you're pouring a worm that's red with a white tail, and you use transparent colors, over time, that red body may bleed onto that white tail, turning it pink. If you need color fastness in your baits, we also offer non-bleed colors. These are made with pigment, so they tend to produce baits that are more opaque, but those bait colors will also not bleed onto each other. So if you make that same worm with a red body and a white tail, they will stay the same color over time. Once you have your mold, plastic, and liquid color, the next step is to decide how you want to heat your plastic. There are a couple of different ways you can do that. The first is with an electric burner. Using an electric burner, you simply use a pan, which you can either buy new or simply use an old pan. Heat your plastic in it until it's ready to pour. What we recommend is using Pyrex cups and a microwave. It's far easier than using a burner, it's much more forgiving, and you are far less likely to scorch your plastic when you're heating it. Whichever way you go, it's very important that you do not use the materials you use to pour plastic when you're cooking food. Once you've used them for plastic, that's all they should be used for. You should also have a digital thermometer capable of reading temperatures up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the temperature that liquid plastic converts at. Now that we've covered the basics and heating your plastic, let's talk about some optional materials you can use to further fine tune the worms you make. First is worm oil. Now we offer worm oil in a number of different scents from earthworm to shadfish to anise. Worm oil can be used either when you're pouring your worms or after they're done to simply add scent and flavor to the baits. We also offer a number of pigments and glitters you can also use to change your baits when you're pouring them. When using glitter, the important thing to consider, whether you buy glitter from us or from a craft store, is that it must be heat resistant. Not all glitters can be heated to 350 degrees without melting. Generally, glitters that are will be labeled as such. If you buy from us or any of the other companies that serve lure crafters, you can be fairly confident that that glitter is heat resistant. We also offer floating agents. This is used to make worms float. Now straight out of the bottle, because it is a plastic, liquid plastic does make worms that float some. If you are looking to float larger hooks or weights, you want to add some floating additive to the baits to make them float better. We do also offer worm salt and sandblast beads. Both of those are used to make worms sink. A couple of other optional additives we have are hardener and softener, and they do exactly what their names imply. You can add hardener to your liquid plastic to make worms that are harder than what's straight out of the bottle, and you can use softer to make softer baits. Finally, we do offer heat stabilizer. Heat stabilizer prevents liquid plastic from scorching when you're heating it. 
All liquid plastics do have a small amount of heat stabilizer in them out of the bottle, but if you're finding you're having issues with your plastic being overheated and scorching or turning yellow, you can use a little bit of the stabilizer to improve your performance. We hope this video helps you get started. I think you'll find, as I have if you pour your own baits, that there's no greater feeling than catching a fish on a bait you built yourself. If you have any questions, you can always find us at barlowstackle.com. I'm Matt Barlow. Thanks, and good fishing.